Now, we've already done this before, so that's nice. Unless you didn't get it the first time. But it's still nice because now we're doing it again. So you'll have that chance to um, maybe get it this time. Now, here's what we want to talk about. Mutually exclusive events. Okay. Now, when it's exclusive, it means these two do not overlap. Okay. The football, remember the football? That's overlapping. That's not exclusive. That means those two sets share something. So when we have mutually exclusive, that's what our Venn diagram will look like. Okay, you may remember Venn diagrams way, 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 way back to the last unit. So, uh, Carlos, we got a deck of 52 cards. <coughs> What's the probability that he drew either an eight or a black card? Now, this is not. These are not exclusive, right? Ask your question. Ask the question. Can you have an eight black card? Yes. Okay. If it was eights and nines, can I have an eight nine? No. Okay. So I so I always ask myself that question. See if it even makes sense, right? Or red cards and spades. Can I have a red spade? No. Okay. So, but this. Yes. They might even have something dumb like that. Okay, so we this is how we would say it in math language: the number of eights plus the number of blacks minus the number of eight and black, because we counted the eight blacks twice. We counted the black eights when we picked the eights. We picked the uh, black eights when we picked the blacks. So we did it twice, so we're just going to bring it out. So how many uh, eights are there? How many black cards? How many eight and blacks? So minus two. So four plus 26 is 30. Minus two is 28. Now, this is the new step. This is going to rock your world. The probability of an 8 or black is 28 out of 52 equals 7 out of 13. So that's the only thing I'm teaching you new today is how to put it over the total. Okay? So should be familiar for most of us, hopefully. Now, if they are exclusive, if they are mutually exclusive, a.k.a. they do not play together, they have nothing in common, no common elements, this is your formula. Okay? What does this stand for? What's that sign mean? Okay? Union slash or. And remember, or is also our plus all the time. Okay? Now, if they're non mutually exclusive, then we have just like we just did in the last question, where the probability of A or B is a probability of A plus a probability of B, and because you counted the A and Bs twice, we're going to subtract it out once. Now, this is another way you could see these. These side slash, this means a probability of A excluding B, and the probability of B excluding A plus the football. So do you get that this is this part? This would be this part, and this is the middle. See, if we do, hey, give me the amount of A's that are not B's. Don't give me any of the B's. Then it would be that little kind of moon, right? It would be just this blue part. And if you gave me the B's excluding A's, it would just be this orange part. And then plus the A and B is the football. So very different than this one. This is all of A plus all of B minus the football. Okay? Both of them are 
very much the same. So like if, if this was 19, well let's do nice numbers. This is 10, this is 2, and this is 8. The way I would do this one, if this was numbers, okay, so if I was to use this formula, that would be 12 plus 10 minus 2, right? Do you see how I did the 12 would be the entire blue, 10 would be the entire orange, and then minus the football. So that would be 20. Now what if I use this formula? Okay, it says do the A's, not the B's. Okay, that's 10. Plus the B's, not you got to exclude the A's. Okay, that's 8. Plus the A and the B's, 2. So we still get 20 for both of them. So I know for most of you, you'd be like, well, that makes sense. But when it's put in a mathematical formula, sometimes it gets a little bit like, uh, you know, looks kind of weird, almost uh, confusing. Now, when, when two sets are mutually exclusive, the number of A and B will be zero. And yes, they might ask you that on the diploma. Okay, they will just ask, what is N, U, and B? Now, for the example I gave you right here, the, exa the answer would be 2. But for this one up here, N, A, and B, like w the intersection, there is no intersection. So the probability would be 0 out of whatever 2. Okay? Now, the new formula that we're going to be learning today is, well, this one here, we're going to put probabilities instead. So let me do the probability of 8 or black. So this is how, what's the probability of 8 plus, plus the probability of black minus the probability of 8 and black. Okay, so instead of when we were doing numbers, we we're just counting them. Now we always have to put them over the total. So what's the probability of picking an eight? How many eights are there? Four. Out of? 52. What's the probability of a black? 26 out of 52. Minus the probability of getting an 8, a black 8, 2 out of 52. All right, there's two, there's the 8 of spades, 8 of clubs, right? Now, when they all have the same denominator, you do not add and subtract denominators, okay? So you just go 4 plus 26 is 30. So we get 28 out of 52 and divide each by 4, you'll get 7 over 13. Okay? And if you look above, all we did with the numbers first, and then we divided by the 52 here, but this is the way you work with probabilities all the way through. Okay? So let's, uh, let's see how this would work on questions. Look at those nice blue... Okay, so we're talking about the principle of inclusion and exclusion, which if they're inclusive, that means they share something. If they're exclusive, that means like it's if an exclusive club, right? Only certain people get to get in, right? Now, Zach is playing a board game. He must roll two four-sided dice numbered one to four. He can move if he rolls a sum of two or a sum of eight. Okay, so again, definitely a diploma question. Now, the first question asks, use A and B to represent the two events that will allow Zach to move. Then draw a Venn diagram. Okay, so what would A be what does he need to be able to get? 
Sum of two. What would the what would the two dice be? One comma one. So, oops. Okay, so that should be in court one comma one like that. Okay, that's the only thing that will get him to move. Or B. What's the other one? Four comma four. Right. Nothing else is going to get that. So for A, this is what my Venn diagram would look like. One comma one. Four comma four. That's A and that's B. It says are A and B mutually exclusive or mutually not exclusive? Mutually mutually exclusive. Okay, C. Determine the probability that Zach will roll a two, a sum of two, or a sum of eight. Now, how many events are there? Yeah, how many possible events are there? Four times four, right? So there's 16 outcomes possible. So the probability of A or B is the probability of A plus the probability of B. Why do I get to use that formula? They're exclusive. There is no football. Or else I'd have to subtract the football out, right? What's the probability of getting A? One out of, what's the probability of getting B? One out of 16. One plus one is two out of 16. Please do not add the denominators, okay? Such a common error. You get, you're getting two out of 32. That goes down to one over 16. You picked out one on the diploma. They do want to see if you're going to add denominators. When do you add denominators? <coughs> Never. Okay? Never. Who's ever told you you can, they're lying to you. Okay? They want to mess with your head. You never add denominators. Ever. When? Never. Okay? So when you're writing your diploma and you're like, yeah, when did he say I could write and when I could add? No, it's never. Okay? Write that down somewhere. Okay? I don't tell you. One half plus one half. I get like two quarters so often. But that's one half. So you got one half plus one half, so half? <laughs> People are like, no. Well, that's what you just did. Oh, okay. So it's one half plus one half is two over two, which is one. That makes sense, right? Give somebody two halves, they're going to have a hole. Don't, don't well, I, yeah. Well, I don't know if death. It should be death. I like that. I like that kind of pressure. Okay, D. Determine the probability that Zach will roll doubles or a sum of six. Okay, so I just want to put this on pause and I want you. Okay, so I'm just going to first start with what some of you did, which was uh, very smart, was this. Because truly, you don't need any formulas if you can do this. Because I would add them together, right? And I got my two, three, four, five. My three, four, five, six, four, five, six, seven, and five, six, seven, eight. And then I would just go through and, okay, I'm looking for roll doubles, okay? Well, these are all my doubles, right? And, or a sum of six. Okay, so that one, that one's already been counted, and then that one. So there is 6 out of 16, or 
3 over 8. That's your answer. Okay? Now, that's the kind of thinking that's going get to get you through this part of the diploma. Like, don't get fancy. Right? Can you, can you think about it? Can you just go through the process? Now, here's the uh, mathy way to do it, right? If we do our probability of doubles, that is 4 out of 16. Uh, my probability of sum of 6, that is 3 out of 16. Right? There's three of them. And the probability of doubles and 6, there's 1 out of 16. So it's, right, P doubles plus P sum of 6 minus P doubles and 6. Right, so that's 4 sixteenths plus 3 sixteenths. Minus 1 sixteenths. It's 4 plus 3 is 7. Minus 1 is 6 sixteenths equals 3 eighths. Okay, so uh, I don't know about you, but I sure see the benefit in this, right? So like I've been saying, you know, with your diploma, you know, you've gone through it once. Now it's time to go through it again. Maybe you did it this way the first time. Okay, it didn't take me long to set that up. I would do it that way again. And sometimes you have a discrepancy and you're like, okay, something's wrong. I've either made a mistake in my chart or I've made a mistake in my formula. And that's where when you catch yourself, it's a good feeling, right? Because you just got yourself another 3% on your diploma. Okay, next one. Pearl's about to draw a card at random from a standard 52 playing cards. If she draws a face card or a spade, she will win a point. Exclusive or not exclusive? Which one? Why? Is there a, a face card that's a spade? Yeah. Yes, there is, right? So, How many face cards are there? 12. There's 12 face cards, right? How many spades? 13 spades. Okay, so if this is face, this is spades, what's the football? Yeah, that is my face cards that are spades. Okay. What? <coughs> so that's your jack of spades, your queen of spades, and your king of spades, right? Okay. So that's jack of spades, queen of spades, and king of spades. Okay. Uh, how many face cards are there that are not spades? How many spades are not face cards? Okay. So right from there, you can go 9 out of 52 plus 10 out of 52 plus 3 out of 52. I'm using that second formula, right? What's face, not spades? Plus what's spades, not face? plus spades and face, and I get 19, 22 out of, why did I write 15? So 22 out of 56, 52, which is 11 over 26. That's where I got my 6 from. Now the other way, remember, is all of face plus all of spades minus football. Okay? Is this seeming redundant to you enough? Where you're like, oh, why do we keep doing this? Good. I'm hoping. Okay, so that would be 12 out of 52 plus 13 out of 52 minus 3 over 52, which is 22 out of 52, which thankfully is the same answer, because when it's not, that's a little unnerving. Okay. 
Okay. Now, believe it or not, you need a, a lot of knowledge to be able to do that question, right? We need the whole last unit to be able to even know how to do this. Okay, so now when they give it to me in probability, this is the first time we've seen this. So the probability that Maria will go to the gym on Saturday is 0 0.75. The probability that she will go shopping on, on Saturday is 0 0.4. The probability she will do neither is 0 0.2. Uh, this is the diploma question right there. Okay, there, that's the diploma question that I've seen right on the diploma, right? And you will all get it right. Now, is it? Ah, who said that? Okay, doesn't equal 100. If it doesn't equal 100, that means there's something got counted twice, right? So, if we go... 0 0.75 plus 0 0.4 plus 0 0.2. This is not equal 100. If it was mutually exclusive, if they will equal 100. If not, there is an overlap. Or, yeah, sorry, in this case, 1. Okay, 100% or 1. Okay, thank you. So, good question. Now they want us to draw the Venn diagram. So this is gym, this is shopping, and then we've got neither, which is outside. So the million dollar question is what is in there? Yeah, do we need a formula? If this should all add up to one, now first of all, what should these two add up to? No, these two. 0 0.8, correct? The 0 0.2 is accurate, but these two are supposed to add up to 0 0.8, so we're going to go 1 minus 0 0.2 equals 0 0.8. These need to add up to 0.8. Does that make sense? Because 0.2 is taken out. Obviously, they uh, did this twice. So let's go 0 0.75 plus 0 0.4 minus 0 0.8. And when we do that, we will get 0 0.35. That is now your football. 0 0.35. So now, since all of G equals 0 0.75, that should be 0 0.4. And all of S is supposed to equal 0 0.4, so that's 0 0.05. What's wrong? Yeah, that, that, would, yeah, that would make the formula, right? We're still using the variation on that formula, for sure. Okay, so this is your football, right? See my football? Tough crowd. Okay, this question, it's like too easy, really, but we'll go through it fast. Okay, so A stands for uh, Métis in Alberta and BC. M stands for Métis in Manitoba and Saskatchewan. And C stands for uh, Métis in Canada, but that's not right. That should be in the rest of Canada, right? Like that's, that's this number out here is people that are not in A and M, okay? Universal is not 124,180, right? So that's one typo. When I was looking through it, and I was like, okay, uh, what's going on there? So determine the probability that a person who is Métis lives in Alberta or British Columbia. So this might be the only thing that might catch people, but probability is success over total. 
So how do we get total? Add these up. Okay? So remember, it's success over total. So Métis in Alberta and Saskatchewan is 144,945. And the total is 389,045. Okay, determine the probability of the person who lives in Manitoba or Saskatchewan. Okay, again, another tough question. 119,920 all over 389,045. Okay, does A or M equal probability of A plus the probability of M in this situation? So what I'm saying is, if you added these together, you would get probability of A and M. Are you allowed to use this formula? Yes? Some people are like, have no idea. Why? Because they're mutually exclusive. Yes. Because they are mutually exclusive. Now determine the odds in favor of a person who is Métis living in one of the western or the four western provinces. Odds in favor. Yes? Uh, no odds wouldn't deal with probability, so you're close. Okay, so what's the number of people, or Métis, that live in all four? One, four, four, nine, Four five plus one nineteen nine two zero. That is two hundred and sixty-four thousand eight hundred and sixty-five. So now what are the odds that you would live in one of the four western provinces? Two hundred sixty-four thousand eight hundred and sixty-five to one two four one eighty. Right? <coughs> and the probability would be this divided by the total of these. Right? Does that make sense? The probability of living in all four, uh, either of the four, will be this divided by the total of these two. Right? It's the entire, the total, the everything. And just so you don't freak out when you're at the diploma you're like oh I don't get what they got you can reduce this right so you can put this into your calculator just like and I want to show because uh, you know it's weird how some things get by but you know your calculator which you get to take into the diploma with you you get to use right so put in 264 eight six five and you're going to use your division sign one two four one eight zero and then you hit the math button that's right under the green alpha button and then hit enter twice and what did you do I must have put a number in wrong oh you didn't want to do it yeah. numbers must be too big piece of crap Oh well, forget everything I just said. Rewind. Okay. Um, so when you go to your multiple choices, so if I go to my multiple choice and I do not see this answer there, 
the best thing to do would be to take the f these first two numbers. So take 264, or actually take the, f the smaller number, 5297. 52973 divided by, oh no, I should have did it the other way. 264865. It's 0.2. So if I multiply 124.180, oh no, no, 124180 times 0.2, does it give me the other one? Yep. Okay, so then you would see that they are in the same ratio to each other. So this. They basically divide it by five. That's the way you can do it. Okay, so we're doing page 68 and 69. Okay, again, most of you are finishing in class, which is good. Um, 